we're gonna go ahead and get started now. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for being here with us. Um, my name is Tamika Bennett. I am a program director of equitable development for Urban Habitat here in Oakland. We are a regional advocacy organization dedicated to climate change, housing, and transportation justice. And I'm just, I'm excited to be here with you all um, and taking part in this event. Uh, I just wanted to share a couple of uh, words about, you know, why we're gathering here today. Um, we know that housing stability is an anchor for many families in our communities. It is critical for the health um, of those we love, uh, communities in our region and states. COVID-19 has made that connection between housing and community even more clear. We know that public policies to provide housing stability are critical in fighting against COVID-19 and supporting the long-term health of all Californians. But far too many Bay Area residents still face um, critical housing situations today. Media, we know, plays a key role in helping us to tell those stories to the public and to policymakers. We just wanna make sure that you all have access to the resources that can speak to solutions that will support all Californians during this crisis and beyond, including movements to strengthen and enforce, an eviction, and enforce eviction protections across the Bay, um, and also offer diverse geographic perspectives and add perspectives that we don't often see in the news. Um, and lastly, we'd, we'd love to make this a recurring event um, because there are always many angles on housing to report on, especially housing right now during COVID. Um, but we'll have time at the end to discuss ideas for future events. I'd like to introduce our hosts. Uh, we're being hosted by Barhai, the Bay Area Regional Health and Equities Initiative, Berkeley Media Studies Group, uh, the Council on Community Housing Organizations, Choo Choo, and Public Advocates. We're gonna take a second now to go over our agenda. So, you've already been over the introductions, which was by me. Oh, we're gonna hear from Barhai, um, Barhai's Executive Director, Melissa Jones. Then we'll hear from some folks who are doing work on the ground, some community organizations, Faith in Action, Housing Rights Committee, and North Bay Organizing Project. Then we'll hear from our legal service providers, Community Legal Services of East Palo Alto, East Bay Community Law Center, the Law Foundation of Silicon Valley, Legal Aid of San Mateo County, and Legal Services of Northern California. We'll have some Q&A, and then we'll ask you, um, our reporters, what would be helpful for future calls? So next we'd like to talk about Zoom management. So we'd like to remind everyone that this event is being recorded. Um, everyone is automatically put on mute. You can rename yourself if you'd like to. Just click on the three dots in the upper right-hand corner on your screen and write in your name and the news outlet so we can identify you. Um, any questions you have, please go ahead and enter them through the chat. I will make sure to read your questions aloud during the Q&A and direct them to our speakers. We will make sure to send out materials and speaker contact information after the call, so don't worry about that. We will make sure to get those things to you. Great, and with that, we are gonna go ahead and uh, hand it over to Melissa. Good morning, this is Melissa Jones from Bar High. We are the coalition of the Bay Area's public health departments. Um, and uh, our mission, is, we were founded by the health departments um, to address the community conditions, the living conditions that impact health those conditions that exist outside the doctor's office that contribute to 80% of our health. Um, in August, we added the coalition to end, end and cut poverty in the Bay Area to our uh, staff because we knew that the connection between economic opportunity and health equity was so strong. Um, COVID-19 has made that connection 
um, clear to many, many uh, people across the region as we see the connection between safe, stable housing um, and our health. Uh, this, we've been studying this um, for a number of years. We've completed a brief with the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco um, focused on housing stability and health. Um, that shows, among other things, that um, people who can comfortably afford their housing spend a third more on food and five times more managing the medical conditions um, uh, that will keep them, keep them healthy. Ensuring housing stability is essential to protect the health of Bay Area residents as the region responds to and recovers from the immediate COVID-19 uh, crisis. Um, the loss of stable housing um, will really disrupt a family's ability to shelter in place, to practice social distance. Um, and that loss can come through eviction, foreclosure, natural disaster, and other causes. Um, and once people end up out of housing or houseless, um, it can be a very long multi-year road to come back into housing. Uh, the local, um, local emergency eviction mor and foreclosure moratoriums offer essential health protections during this time. Um, and yet for far too many Bay Area residents, they're still facing a precarious housing situation. Um, we need our elected officials to continue to take action to protect renters and to build new affordable homes. Um, and the need for housing stability won't stop with shelter in, when shelter in place orders are lifted. It's essential that everyone's health is protected in case there are more waves of COVID-19 infections and it's critical for lifetime health that people have stable housing that allows them to grow and thrive. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, next, we have Lorena Melharo, Melgarejo, sorry, from Faith in Action and the Regional Tenants Organization. Right. Thank you so much. Um, I am the director of Faith in Action Bay Area, and we're here in San Francisco and in San Mateo County. And uh, for the Regional uh, Tenant Organizing Network, we're actually in the wider Bay Area. Uh, for Faith in Action, we work with, within faith congregations across the peninsula and, and in the neighborhoods with, with the people in the community. So like our goal is to build the leadership so residents themselves can work to identify what the problems are and build together to have the power to confront the issues that are affecting their families. Um, right now, in the peninsula, on every block on every neighborhood there's this shared feeling of like danger anxiety just not knowing what to do because people's lives and livelihoods and their homes are all at stake um but the reality is like this feeling is not new for us in the peninsula we have been living with forced economic displacements for our working families um, because there hasn't been renter protections in place. So families were being evicted every day with no cost evictions, huge rent increases. It was normal. That was normal before COVID-19. So now with this new crisis that has taken away our health and our jobs, people are just living in fear for, for the future in general. Um, but also as Faith in Action, we know that crisis always presents us both with all these feelings of anxiety and fear and danger, but also with great opportunity for transformation. So I just want to make it clear that we as a society have the opportunity right now to make some new choices and reorganize our economy in our family's favor. Um, this shelter in place has brought to light a truth that we as a movement have been trying to lift up for years, right? That homes are sacred, um, and they are critical to sustain public health. So in order to do this, what we're thinking about as Faith in Action and our networks is we need to continue to protect the homes of our most vulnerable families. And that this can come in the shape of designing policy and programs to protect tenants and homeowners from eviction. We need to work together to create and be very, very creative <laughs> in creating revenue measures. Uh, to help tenants purchase their buildings uh, together, like creating new ways of, of land ownership. It could be land trusts, housing co-ops, something that would actually preserve the affordable units that naturally already exist in our neighborhoods. This is super important so people can stay home in their community. 
And in order to achieve any of this, uh, for us, we understand that we need to continue to build the leadership and the voice of the residents themselves, the people who are directly affected by the most of this pain that's happening, and create strong coalitions across sectors with small businesses, with labor, faith, educators, and others who share this vision of housing stability as a key to build strong communities. Thank you, Lorena. Next, we have Fred Sherbin Zimmer of Housing Rights Committee. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Sherbin Zimmer. Most people just call me Fred. I'm the director of Housing Rights Committee of San Francisco. We see over 5,000 people calling a, a hotline a year um, in five different languages here in San Francisco. And we build tenant councils throughout the city of San Francisco, both in private and public housing, focusing on building up the rights of low-income tenants. And we're in an unprecedented crisis. Like Lorena said, many tenants already were stretched too thin, paying too much of their income in rent. And San Francisco and Oakland, who won some of the strongest eviction moratoriums during this crisis, still have a, another crisis coming down the pike. We are, it's a dam that's going to break. And a mor eviction moratorium that says you have to pay months of rent money back at the end of it or face eviction just means that tens of thousands of tenants are just holding off until for a moment to be able to be stay safe, a moment to be able to stay home. Um, our, flood, our hotlines have been flooding with calls. We've been getting two or three times the volume we usually get um, of tenants who are just desperately afraid and whose landlords are still harassing them. Um, in the tenant councils in some of the biggest corporate landlord buildings in San Francisco, Veritas, the tenants are still feeling pressure to pay rent at any cost. Um, while in the same buildings, hundreds of corporate rentals sit empty. And what we really need to fight for here is a cancellation of rent and mortgages. We're in a, this, this is an international crisis. Everyone was asked to tighten their belts to be able to keep the community safe. We need to not punish tenants for doing what they needed to do to protect their neighbors and community members. Thanks so much, Thank Fred. Sorry. Thank you, Fred. And next, we're going to hear from Beatriz Camacho from North Bay Organizing Project. Thank you, Tamika. <clears throat> My name is Beatriz Camacho, pronouns she, her, ella. I'm a tenant organizer with the North Bay Organizing Project in Santa Rosa, up in Sonoma County. I'm the daughter of immigrants and a lifelong renter here in Santa Rosa. NBOP is rooted in working class and people of color communities, uniting people to build leadership and grassroots power for social, economic, racial, and environmental justice. Up here in the North Bay, we have been in a state of emergency since October of 2017, when we experienced the Sonoma Complex fires, and we lost 5% of our housing stock in Santa Rosa. We were experiencing 50% rent increases from 2012 to 2017 prior to the fire, and had a 1% vacancy rate. Right now, we need stronger moratoriums on evictions in order to ensure our tenants can truly shelter in place during the public health crisis without fear of losing their home. Napa County, our neighboring county, has yet to pass the moratorium on evictions, the only Bay Area county out of the nine left to do so. Waiting to see what they are going to do at the state or federal level is not only a lack of leadership from local government, but it is dangerous and irresponsible. To ensure we don't repeat history, to ensure that we don't just delay a mass wave of evictions once the eviction moratoriums are lifted, and to ensure we don't see mass foreclosures 
What we need is a cancellation of rents and mortgages. Up here in Sonoma County, we are known as wine country, a big tourism playground where one in 10 jobs are in the tourism and hospitality industry, jobs that many of our undocumented community takes on. Nationally, we are seeing black, indigenous, and people of color disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. NBOP, along with other local organizations, created a fund during the 2017 complex fires, when we quickly realized that our undocumented community, most of them renters, weren't receiving any aid during that disaster. We've relied on on DocuFund four times now, back in 2017, during the February 2019 flooding, the October 2019 Kincaid fire, and now COVID-19. This crisis is simply exposing and amplifying the reality that many renters were facing before, fear of eviction and inability to pay rent. We need relief that puts people first, regardless of their status. Thank you. Thank you so much, Beatriz. Uh, we're going to transition down here from our um, legal allies, starting with Jason Terracone of uh, East Palo Alto Community Legal Services. Hi, everyone. I'm the directing attorney of the housing program at Community Um, I think we lost that connection, so maybe we can go to the next speaker and come back to Michael. Um, okay. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> no worries. Uh, we will go to Sable Lan uh, Landrum of East Bay Community Law Center. Hi, uh, yes. I'm a staff attorney in the housing practice at East Bay Community Law Center. We are the training clinic for Berkeley Law, and we are the largest provider of free legal services in Alameda County. We help clients with legal issues related to housing, immigration, health, economic security, and education. What I'm seeing is that many tenants are confused by the patchwork of local, county, and state protections, as well as changes to court procedures. Because Gavin Newsom failed to enact a broad statewide ban on evictions in response to the public health crisis, it has been up to currently overwhelmed cities and counties to quickly adopt measures. And these local measures are acting as a tourniquet, but once the moratoriums lift, as Fred alluded to, there's likely going to be an avalanche of evictions. Further, in, the, in part because of the confusing patchwork of laws and in part out of fear of losing their housing, I'm seeing tenants who are being coerced into signing new agreements with their landlords that they can't possibly keep. They're being pressured to handing over stimulus checks, which they need for food and other basic necessities, or they're still being served eviction notices. And all of this makes it more likely that a family will end up on the street, which will just exacerbate the public health crisis. And now I'd like to have my colleague, Iris, speak to what she's been seeing as well. Hi everyone, my name is Iris Craig. I'm a program and intake coordinator with EBCLC. Uh, we need to cancel rent and mortgages across the board. This is a matter of economic equity. In Berkeley alone, we've received hundreds of calls from all sorts of people, many of whom have never needed rental assistance before. It looks like small business owners, sound technicians, real estate agents, and many in the service industry who are out of work with, by no fault of their own and in need of rental assistance. Folks who are already living paycheck to paycheck absolutely cannot afford additional debt on top of struggling to feed their families. And tenants should not be punished with the economic impacts of COVID. The right thing to do is to cancel all debt and cancel all rent and mortgages and for eviction court to make radical changes to keep everyone stable after shelter in place. Uh, we'd be happy to speak about that in the Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sable and Iris. Uh, we're going to go next to Michael Trujillo of Legal Aid Society of San Mateo County. I'm Michael Trujillo, I'm a staff attorney and um, I'm actually at the Law Foundation of Silicon Valley in San Jose. Um, so our housing program provides uh, free legal advice and representation to low income tenants throughout Santa Clara County. And we assist tenants with defending eviction lawsuits, housing discrimination issues, section eight terminations and other affordable housing issues, as well as provide advice and information to homeowners about foreclosure prevention. So right now in Santa Clara County, we're seeing a huge need to cancel rent. We have a strong eviction moratorium, but it does not excuse the obligation to pay rent. So we are seeing tenants who are relying on the moratorium accruing thousands of dollars in rent debt as this crisis continues. We're also hearing from an increasing number of tenants who have experienced harassment from their landlord around paying rent or have been pushed into harsh payment plan agreements. 
Some of these agreements have contained provisions that abridge tenants' rights under the eviction moratorium, waive rights to take action against the landlord for things like discrimination or failure to complete repairs, and or commit all future relief or stimulus payments to, that the tenant receives to the landlord, regardless of whether that tenant family needs the, the money for basic necessities. We've also seen a substantial increase in callers facing illegal self-help evictions, lockouts, harassment from landlords demanding rents, um, and landlords are legally inquiring about immigration status or threatening to report undocumented tenants to immigration authorities. So a measure canceling rent would provide incredible stability to these families. As this crisis unfolds, we're also um, concerned with avoiding a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis in which widespread foreclosures among individual homeowners and small landlords enabled speculative investors to buy up a lot of the housing stock in the Bay Area. That transferred wealth out of our communities and resulted in more corporate owned market rate housing instead of affordable homes that made our housing crisis worse. For the past year or so, we've been supporting the formation of the South Bay Community Land Trust with the goal of creating some permanently affordable community owned housing in the South Bay. And this work is only more pressing now with the market conditions created by COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We're now gonna to go to Shirley Gibson. And a legal service. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi. Yeah, <laughs> great. Thanks for the intro. Um, I'm Shirley Gibson. I'm directing attorney with Legal Aid Society of San Mateo County. Um, our agency has been doing direct services for over 55 years in the community now. So we have a, a long view, I would say, on the evolution of what housing, um, the housing economy has looked like in this, this heart of Silicon Valley. Um, and working in partnership with our uh, community legal services in East Palo Alto agency uh, partners, we do direct services to um, over 1,500 tenants a year with about half of the unlawful detainer activity um, contested in our county coming through our direct services clinics. So we have um, both a long view and a, and a robust sample size, I'd say, of what the eviction activity um, looks like. And I would say particular to San Mateo County, um, you know, we have seen similar to our Bay Area neighbors, just a ridiculous uh, over exuberance uh, amongst investors in really um, just frankly gouging <laughs> our, our low income tenant community for, um, you know, the resource of, of uh, real estate speculation and, and profit to the degree that so much of our eviction activity has really been um, buoyed by this market force that allows um, people to take wild amounts of profit out of highly escalating rents and going so far as to empty entire buildings um, based on lending structures that are predicated on the idea that you can get more and more and more rent uh, hand over hand. So what we're seeing with the COVID crisis, I think, is is both uh, you know a tragedy, but a a opportunity, as, as has been alluded to by by our partners, um, that we have a resounding reality check on that over exuberant uh, housing market, that that you know risk free tenant who can afford to pay these absurd rents is is begun, going to become more of a unicorn amongst the rental industry uh, and that we have now an opportunity to sort of put a, a check on that over exuberant housing market and and put some of this housing into the hands of um, sort of sensible market players. So at this juncture, we are really pushing for some common sense economic recovery uh, policy in our region, uh, something that addresses the reality that um, there is not a pot of gold at the end of this eviction moratorium rainbow for landlords to you know, escape unscathed uh, amongst the, um, the people impacted by economic setbacks in this county and that we need to have an eye towards um, some sound economic recovery policy, not just stopgap measures that alleviate this rent burden from the tenants who we know as, as a general population are going to be the least likely to backfill um, that, that uh, economic loss 
look to the landlords to bear some of that burden where they're able and look to the lenders to bear the majority of that burden in a way that we know they can uh, rather than looking at sort of uh, agnostic bailouts amongst the real estate players in our in our county. So we're hoping that our local um, legislators can look towards extending rent relief. Um, definitely rental assistance plays a role, but it can't be the only model and uh, some form of rent cancellation is really going to have to be one of the things that turns the wheel for us. Great. Thank you so much, Shirley. And we do see the, the chats and I want to apologize. We know that our screen seems to be stuck, but we are working on getting that fixed. Um, so we're going to continue to move ahead on in our agenda. And we've got some, oh, there we go. We've got some question and answer coming up now. And I, I just want to remind folks, if you're not online and are dialing in from a phone, you can text your questions to us at 202-550-9000. Oh, okay. And I also just got noticed that Jason Terracone of Community Legal Services in East Palo Alto is back with us. So right before we jump into our q and I'm going to allow him to, um, to take his turn. So Jason, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I don't know what's happening here. Um, I'm the directing attorney of the housing program at Community Legal Services in East Palo Alto. Uh, we represent tenants in San Mateo County and uh, Mountain View in Santa Clara County. Um, today is May 12th, and that means that in about 20 days, um, a lot of moratoriums currently in place will be expiring on May 31st, if nothing else is done. Um, and that will leave thousands of families in the Bay Area vulnerable to eviction if they can't pay June rent, um, even if they're not able to go back to their jobs yet or starting work is slow. Uh, June rent will not be covered by many moratoriums. So the first thing we need to happen is uh, for our elected officials to extend any moratoriums that are expiring, um, at least until the end of, state of, of the state of emergency. Um, the second thing that city and cities and counties must do is address the underlying problem, which is this giant ballooning uh, rent debt that's accruing right now. Um, we need a solution that combines financial assistance with canceling rent or mortgages, or at the very least, ensuring that no one will ever be evicted uh, for not being able to pay the rent during this pandemic. Um, some counties have already done that. Uh, Alameda County and Solano County have passed laws that <clears throat> make sure that no one will be evicted for this rent debt and require landlords to try to collect the debt in small claims court rather than through the eviction process. Those are solutions that will work and many more counties need to step up and do things like that. Great, thank you so much, Jason. Um, and we also have one more addition. Sarah, are you on? We're gonna allow you to go ahead and um, speak as well. Great, hi everyone, my name is Sarah Steinheimer. I'm a housing attorney at Legal Services of Northern California. We are the legal aid agency for 23 counties in Northern California from Sacramento and Solano County North. Um, we, see thousands, we assist thousands of tenants every year on housing issues, even though we provide a wide range of, of um, legal representation and advice on a wide range of civil issues. Housing has been the number one thing that tenants have contacted us about in the last few years. Our clients are primarily lower income renters and have been facing severe housing instability for a number of years. What we're seeing in the last month or two due to COVID-19 is an exacerbation of that instability. In Sacramento County specifically, while a number of jurisdictions have passed um, local protections that are aimed at um, protecting renters who cannot pay rent uh, during COVID-19. As Jason just mentioned in some areas that he works, most of those ordinances are set to expire on May 31st. And so as of June 1st, there will be no protections for many renters in Sacramento County. 
In Solano County, another area that we work, there is a strong moratorium that will not that will protect renters from eviction. Um, it does not address the debt that renters will accrue um, due to unpaid rent, and so it does not address sort of the long-term impact that potential bad credit will have. And as those of us who assist um, renters in housing matters, we know poor credit can actually have a very long-term impact on ability to housing. Landlords often do credit checks and look at those issues. I also wanted to just mention, as other legal service providers have talked about, is that we are seeing a real surge in landlords using harassment tactics to get people out. Since there is a pause on most unlawful detainers right now, we're seeing landlords threatening and using um, self-help measures such as locking people out, trying to call the police on tenants and things like that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. So we're now gonna move into our Q&A portion. And again, just want to um, let folks know you can submit questions through our chat and you can also text them to the number 202-550-9076. I'm going to go ahead and begin. Uh, we had one question that came in from Henrietta Burroughs of East Palo Alto EPA today. I'm going to read her question and also um, read an answer for you. One second. Great. So the question was, given the fact that densely populated areas like New York and New Jersey suffered the highest incidence of COVID-19, will there be a reconsideration of housing density as more affordable housing is constructed? Great question. So the answer to that is dense cities like Taipei, Hong Kong, and Seoul have been more successful than the U.S. in their approaches to COVID-19. What matters is the response and resources from government rather than density. Social factors like providing income supports and rent protections are critical. What evidence is showing us is that housing security and income supports are more critical right now for health. We must focus on stabilizing families and keeping them in place. We are also seeing an increase in COVID-19 in rural areas and know that it can be harder for people to access the things they need there, like groceries and testing, which is something that is actually easier to address in denser cities. Thank you, Henrietta, for your question. Um, Ida Mohadad, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing names, um, from the San Francisco Examiner. What housing stories have you all noticed? I'm sorry. I think I am out of order. Sorry. I think there's another question before I does. Okay, sorry. Um, there is a second question from Henrietta Jones. I apologize, Ida, we'll come back to your question. How do you cancel rent and mortgage? Do you forego them with several months without interest charges? What do you say to landlords who might need some rent payments to pay their mortgages to banks now? Uh, we're gonna direct that question to Sable and Iris. And I'm happy to repeat the question. Hi, so let me start off first of all with what you would say to landlords who might need some rent payments to pay their mortgages or to pay their banks. Um, what we are advocating for first of all is for rent and mortgage cancellations so that landlords, especially small landlords, are protected. For landlords who are needing rent payments, we first need to secure rights for tenants. And the reason that's so important is evictions move very quickly through the courts. We need to ensure that there's housing security for public health reasons. Next, we need to tackle relief for homeowners and landlords with mortgages and mortgage relief. The reality is that the foreclosure process is slower than the eviction process and the financial relief is less urgent from a public health perspective. So that being said, we need to make sure that mortgage relief does happen and that it's targeted to homeowners and small and medium sized landlords. We've seen abuses and protections targeted for small business owners. So we wanna make sure that mortgage relief doesn't primarily go to the speculators, but benefited from and contributed to the housing crisis and rising rents. They took risks by trade, by profession, and they should be in a better position to shoulder the risk. They've already profited from it. But canceling rent and mortgages do need to be part of the solution, especially for smaller landlords who need that money. 
um, and at a minimum mortgages should be deferred when, with payments. So how you can do this basically is you can defer mortgage payments so that they're due at the end of mortgages without interest accruing. So in the end, the banks still get their money too. There's just a delay in the process. And there are bills making their way through um, the house, both on the federal level and also through the state um, that are trying to provide mortgage relief for landlords and homeowners. Yeah, and I'll also just say, um, it seems like the federal government is really familiar with how to give bailouts, and it's time to give renters and the people um, bailouts. You know, $500 billion to businesses would actually really benefit um, tenants across the country, um, homeowners across the country, um, these small mom and pop landlords um, need a bailout at this time and shouldn't be punished for the um, economic impacts of COVID. Uh -oh. Great. Thank you, Addison Sybil. We are gathering our next question. What stories have you all noticed have been underreported during the shelter in place, save the need for renter forgiveness? We're going to ask that, or we're going to direct that to Lorena, and that's from Ida. Let me know if you'd like me to repeat it, Lorena. Okay, I'm sorry, we're having technical difficulty with Lorena's sound. Um, Beatriz, would you mind answering this question? Yeah, um, something that's been coming up and we're receiving more and more calls around is the reality that tenants are having to choose between um, putting food on the table versus paying the rent and individuals who perhaps have signed long term leases and now want to break those leases and worried about the consequences around that um, and wanting to do that in order to be able to perhaps move in with um, family during this time to ensure that they're not accumulating rent debt. So just the reality around that and then speaking to um, the experiences of our undocumented community. Um, as I shared when I spoke earlier, it's important to ensure that we're all able to stay in our homes and um, the relief rental assistance funds that are coming from the federal government um, don't apply to our undocumented communities. So highlighting that um, in a larger manner is really important during this time. Thank you, Beatriz. Um, Lorena, is your sound okay? Would you like to answer the question? No, the sound is not back. Okay. Uh, so we will move on to the next question which is, what are advocates working towards next? Uh, we'll direct that one to Fred and then Beatriz. Besides working, advocates are working beyond just the cancellation of rent, which I think is actually one of the crucial things hanging over tenants' heads, but a wider discussion about debt in this moment, that we're pushing more and more debt on everyone, whether it's for utility payments, whether it's for other thing, debts, of the ongoing burden of student loan debt, um, that as Sybil talked about and others talked about, that this debt comes back to haunt low-income people, especially tenants, over and over. And that I, it is the part of the, the question isn't only about canceling rent. It's a bigger question around how do we help make it so that we do, don't just do continual bailouts of the people at the top. We bail out the airline industry without bailing out workers and airlines or even guaranteeing their basic safety in this moment. 
we, we don't want to move into a mo- moment where we just guarantee that we bail out landlords. And in San Francisco, the majority of landlords are large landlords. We organize against the landlord or the tenants of a landlord named Veritas. They own over 8,000 units in San Francisco. They're backed by all kinds of international capital. These are folks who gambled on the housing speculation. They gambled on the right that rents would keep going up. Banks who also gave loans. And on those loan papers, it said that they would raise the rent two or three times what it was. And we see this all over the Bay Area, all over the state. And when you gamble, sometimes you lose. And it shouldn't only be tenants who weren't gambling, but were surviving, who have to bail out their landlords. And a system that keeps asking the, about poor landlords. And we, if you're going to, if you're going to forward, if the government is going to ha- help landlords, make sure it is the smallest landlords, make sure it is the real mom and pops, because these giants are gobbling up all the funding, and they're also causing a large amount of the crisis. Thank you, Fred. Um, We are going to shoot it back to Jason. He has an answer around long-term risk of can, uh, if long-term risk if rent is not canceled and worst case scenarios. Jason? Yeah, so if, if a lot of the current moratoriums stay in place without more uh, solutions being put on the table, um, the problem is that this rent debt is piling up and there really is no, no way to deal with it. Um, once workers go back to work, uh, working families who were already living paycheck to paycheck are not going to be able to pay their current rent in the fall on top of uh, paying back two or three or four months of back rent. That's just not going to happen. And um, even with the moratoriums in place, once the time expires for the rent to be paid, uh, those landlords can file eviction cases for that rent if the tenants do not make that, that large balloon payment. We already saw during the foreclosure crisis that large balloon payments for working in middle class families do not work in the, in the homeownership context, and they certainly don't work for tenants. Um, so that's why we're looking for solutions and offering solutions to, to deal with that ballooning rent debt that would, that would not involve people being evicted. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. Uh, we have another question. To what extent have legislators been paying attention to solving the issue of mass eviction once the emergency orders are lifted? We're gonna direct that one to Iris. Iris, you're on mute, but it looks like you're asking me to ask the yes, question one more time. No problem. I'm not sure if I signed up for this yeah. question, but you can ask it anyway. Okay. Uh, to what extent have legislators been paying attention to solving the issues of mass eviction once the emergency orders are lifted? Well, in Alameda County specifically, um, it sounds like right now, and we know certainly in Oakland, that tenants cannot be evicted for this debt that they owe. Um, Oakland has really strong um, eviction moratorium for this rent debt. However, it will become a consumer debt. Um, my understanding is that if a, if a tenant has a judgment in small claims, that this can um, end up on their credit score, which would make it more difficult for them to rent into the future. So I think what it could end up looking like is that tenants will become houseless and this will increase the public health crisis. Um, so there are some folks who are thinking through it, um, but it's hard to see you know, outside of Alameda County what exactly is going on to prevent these evictions for the rent going forward. And just to add to that, um, this is Sable again with East Bay Community Law Center. Um, the, at the state and federal level, as of right now, nothing has really been done um, by the legislatures to uh, prevent action once the crisis lifts. And that is um, a risk that's waiting to happen, even in the areas that have passed strong um, ordinances. 
because at some point the crisis will lift and the most vulnerable, it's gonna take them a while to find jobs, get back to work and to be able to pay their rent. So let's say the crisis lifts in July and rent does come due August, it doesn't mean they're immediately going to have income, but they're not gonna be protected by these ordinances. So more does need to be done on a legislative level. Great, thank you. Uh, our next question. Uh, the state Senate proposal for relief package for tenants and landlords provides relief to renters um, for missed rent payments. What are your thoughts about this, this approach? And we will direct this one to Sarah. Sarah, I'm also happy to read the question again. Are you referring? I'm sorry. I thought that me, Sarah, Sarah Sandhammer. Yes. Yes. Um, I can read the question. Yeah, again? please do. Yeah. Sure. Um, the Senate, the state Senate's proposal for relief package for tenants and landlords provides relief to renters for missed rent payments. What are your thoughts about this approach? So I, I'm not familiar with the specific proposal, so I, I can't speak on it. I, I mean, I will say that I think generally um, this is a combined problem for tenants um, and landlords. And, you know, I, I think we know that our clients will not be able to get caught up on rent. Our clients are the lowest income um, renters, and we're pretty confident that uh, that they, without some type of relief, even given more time to get caught up, they won't be able to. But I can't speak directly on that proposal because I'm not familiar with it. Thank you, Sarah. Our next question. Um, oh. Uh, this is Shirley Gibson at Legal Aid Society, San Mateo County. I, I'm, I'm thinking that the question is maybe directed to the Senate Bill 1410, which was a sort of a, a, a gut and rewrite effort by the California Apartment Association that's pending. It's a rent voucher program to backfill unpaid rent. Of, uh, it, it's, it's a landlord assistance um, program. So I do want to just sort of chime in that we have to be, I think, very judicious with, with our public resources. When we talk about rental assistance to tenants, we're talking about a population that, it, not universally, but I think in, in large, large majority is simply not paying rent because they're not capable of paying rent. But when we look at relief programs targeted to landlords, you're talking about a much more um, varied population of, as has been pointed out by other speakers on this call, many landlords can bloody well afford to write out some months of unpaid rent. Uh, some can't. And so a program like that that's being proposed with SB 1410 that's completely agnostic as to the level of need for those landlords where we spend potentially billions of dollars of taxpayer money backfilling lost revenue for that industry um, is just not a great use of public resources in the long haul. Um, Means-tested assistance to landlords would be a much more modest uh, use of government funds than than universal bailouts. And so I think across the board, everyone here is is I think in agreement um, that you know we need to target the assistance more cleverly than a program like that would suggest. Great, thank you. So we are almost at time. So we actually want to pivot and ask if there are um, some ideas from reporters who are on the call about what you'd like to hear in the future. If we were to make these regular calls, how would you like to engage with us? Would regular calls be useful? Go ahead and shoot. Please enter your answer into the chat. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. I will read your answers and, and your contributions. We'd also love to hear about other topics related to housing that would be important to you. We know that there are many different angles that can be taken with COVID happening right now. So please let us know that as well. Hearing from tenants across the Bay Area is always helpful. 
Thank you, Louise Hansen. Upcoming housing legislation and how it will affect Bay Area residents. Thank you, Henrietta. It's hard to reach people directly, so hearing from tenants directly impacted and just hearing what makes paying rent difficult. Thank you, Ida. If you could provide information about what public records and data are available to quantify some of these issues, that would be helpful. Thank you, Rachel. These are great. Data, thank you, Susie data. Uh, Natalie's curious to hear ideas for types of people and experiences you think are not well represented in journalism. Um, tenants who are going through such and such. Okay, great. Thank you, Natalie. Great. So if you have additional things, please, please put them into the chat. Um, we will continue to collect those, but we want to make sure to respect everyone's time and we're at 12.55. Um, so again, please continue to drop your thoughts into the chat. And lastly, we just want to say thank you to everyone who participated today. Thank you to all of our panelists who spoke. Uh, and thank you to all of the reporters who, so have many tennis stories. Thank you to all the reporters who joined us today. Uh, it's really important that we get these stories about what's happening on the ground and how our families are struggling to make basic choices between groceries and rent is really important. And we're hoping to get their stories out in, to the public. So thank you. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Duck. Um, yeah, just thank you for joining. And, um, and um, I, I think that unless there's anything else, Tamika, then I, I thank you for, for joining the call today. Um, thank you for uh, bearing with any technical difficulties we experienced. We appreciate your patience and um, we hope to see you again soon and we will be, we will be sharing out the recording and following up. Thank you very much. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>